everybody! I'm Lily, and this is our world. I'm about to go over to my friend's house to play, but it's raining outside. Now some people might be scared of the rain, but not me. I'm an explorer, so I'm gonna go get ready. Come on! Well, I've got my raincoat on, but I should probably check the weather report to see how long this rain's going to last. Ooh, it's NASA TV, and that's astronaut Sandy Magnus. The weather can wait. Let's see what she's talking about. In order to go outside, we need to have special suits designed to do it. They're actually one-person spaceships, and they have to do everything to protect you that basically the space station does to protect us while we're flying through space at 17,500 miles per hour. Wow, that's fast. And so the engineers had to sort of take something like the space station and squinch it down to make it fit one person. Also, it has to protect you from the extreme environment of space. There's huge temperature swings whether you're in the sun or you're in the shade. And it has to be able to protect you from those temperature swings as well. Cool. I guess my raincoat is a little like a spacesuit. It protects me from the rain and it helps keep me nice and warm. I wonder what else space suits have to do. It has to have a way to give you oxygen. And when you're breathing, of course, you're putting carbon dioxide back into the system. So it has to have a way to clean the carbon dioxide out of the air that's in your spacesuit. It, of course, has to have electricity or a power source so that all the other systems can run. I guess I'll have to get a spacesuit. It also has to be flexible enough that you can move around and, and work in it. It can't be, you know, a hard, metal sphere that you just sit inside and float around in, you have to be able to work in it. So that means all of the human factors people need to get involved as well. It can't be rigid, it has to be soft and flexible. Wow, imagine how tough it would be to work in a hard suit that didn't bend. Pretend you don't have any elbows, so you can't bend your arms. What are some of the things you wouldn't be able to do? And try walking if you couldn't bend your knees. I wonder why astronauts need to go outside the space station. Maybe Sandy will tell us. What we do is we go outside in the vacuum of space in our special suits and we perform tasks out there that need to be done. Some things, of course, we can do with robots, but for a lot of things you need a human being. And there's a lot of equipment on the outside of the space station that needs to be taken care of. It's like kind of like in your house when your roof needs a repair or the air conditioning that's outside needs to repair or you have to go out to the garage and do something. It's kind of the same thing on the space station. We have a lot of things that are outside that need to have people go out and take a look at them and fix them. And we also put science experiments outside in the vacuum of space because you can learn more interesting things about the environment out there as well. Oh, it looks like the rain stopped. Time for me to get out of this raincoat. Here, keep watching Sandy while I get ready to go. And when you guys are ready to come to NASA and help us with some of our problems of living in space, you'll have to help us design a spacesuit for going to Mars. And it'll be a little bit like the one for the moon, but the environment on Mars is different and the, the materials there are different and the gravity there is different. And so we'll have to come up with yet a different kind of design for a spacesuit. Ooh, I can design spacesuits when I grow up. That's really cool. My rainy day turned out really good. So what did we learn today? We learned that astronaut spacesuits are like one person spaceships. We learned that astronauts do many kinds of work outside the space station. And we learned that NASA is going to need us to help design spacesuits for new missions. I'll have to think about my design for a spacesuit. I think I'll make mine green.